Our topic for this session is colonic emergencies. Our first case is of diverticulitis with bladder fistula formation. There is a giant diverticulum adjacent to the sigmoid colon, a large collection of gas and debris with a heterogeneously thickened wall. Note also there is a defect at its base where it communicates with the lumen of the sigmoid colon. There is otherwise extensive diverticulosis and hypodense wall thickening throughout the sigmoid colon. In the bladder, there is a very obvious gas fluid level as well as intraluminal hypodensity consistent with stool. Posteriorly, there is normally excreted contrast. Let's look first at that giant sigmoid diverticulum, its heterogeneous wall thickening, and that defect at its base, which communicates with the sigmoid lumen. Note again the sigmoid diverticulosis and wall thickening. Inferiorly, you can see that is compressing the dome of the bladder, and here is the small communication between the two, where you can see stool passing from the colonic diverticulum into the bladder. So that is a case of giant diverticulitis with an associated bladder fistula. Our next case is of acute colonic hemorrhage. Well, this is not particularly challenging, but the CTA for acute colonic hemorrhage is becoming a very commonly performed examination. And I thought for the sake of everyone's edification, we might look at one simple case of it. You can see the contrast density within the lumen there in the descending colon. And it can be just a quick flash, but if you blink, you miss. That's what you're looking for, is a small focus of intraluminal contrast extravasation. So that's acute hemorrhage involving the descending colon. Our next case is pseudomembranous colitis with an associated perforation. The perforations in these cases can be extremely subtle. That colonic wall gets markedly thickened and inflamed and loses all of its integrity, but it doesn't always frankly rupture. Often it's just a tiny leak that results in these small intraperitoneal foci of gas. Obviously there is extensive wall thickening throughout the entire colon, and it is that extensive involvement that specifically suggests pseudomembranous colitis as the cause. So when you see the entire colon involved throughout its length, such as in this case, suggests pseudomembranous colitis. Let's look first at those small foci of gas, which really put this case on a whole other level. You can appreciate those tiny foci, obviously, this patient's management is significantly altered. Let's now appreciate the extent of the involvement, essentially the entire length of the colon from cecum to rectum is involved with hypodense wall thickening. So that is a case of pseudomembranous colitis with perforation. Our next case is of ischemic colitis. This patient has pneumatosis on the posterior aspect of the cecum and ascending colon, obviously not obeying the laws of gravity and density. There is also a very small filling defect within one of the superior mesenteric vessels. You'll see that's actually wrapping around from the artery lying immediately adjacent to the vein, which is patent and posterior. Let's look first 
at the pneumatosis involving the cecum and descending colon. You can see really throughout all of the proximal colon that pneumatosis is present. Now let's go to that superior mesenteric artery filling defect. You can see the artery right here at its origin and if we follow it superiorly there is a tiny filling defect again right there. So this is a thromboembolic proximal colonic ischemia. Our next case is an unusual cecal herniation through the foramen of Winslow. So here is the tip of the cecum here. It has migrated superiorly and from right to left, passing through the foramen of Winslow. You can see it is elongated and distorted throughout this segment, right through the portal region there. So look for that elongated segment. There it was. You can see this is ascending colon on this side. And of course, cecum to the left. And there is that intervening, stretched, elongated, and almost occluded segment. So that is a cecal herniation, again, through the foramen of Winslow. Our next case is a sigmoid volvulus. There is marked distension of the more proximal sigmoid. You can see the sigmoid lumen is narrowed, and in fact the sigmoid can be seen to be longitudinally folded upon itself due to the twisting. So there's clearly colonic obstruction with dilation of the entirety of the colon. And there in the central abdomen, you can see the massive distension of the sigmoid colon reaching all the way up into the portal region. As we come inferiorly, there is the twisted and folded portion of the sigmoid, which can really be well appreciated. So that is a sigmoid volvulus. Our next case is a cecal volvulus, this one with associated ischemia. There is the pneumatosis on the posterior aspect of the twisted and displaced cecum. Adjacent to it, we see another one of those segments of elongation and luminal narrowing consistent with a volvulus. So here again we see the pneumatosis in a markedly dilated cecum. A large segment of cecum has actually been involved with this volvulus and is all quite ischemic. And here again you see that uh, segment of narrowing and elongation there in the right lower quadrant which probably represents the mid-ascending colon. Note also marked dilation of the small bowel especially on the right aspect of the abdomen. So that is a case of a cecal volvulus with associated ischemia. Our last case is an unusual one. This was a heroin mule who suffered aspiration, most likely while trying to ingest the heroin capsules that ended up in his colon. So in the lung bases, you can see consolidation, or at least airspace density, consistent with aspiration. And in the colon, there are multiple hypodense Capsules containing packed densities that represent compacted drugs. 
They are present throughout the colon. This is a fairly impressive hall. You appreciate again the lung base density there. And there are the drug capsules all throughout the proximal colon. One would be concerned that one of these might have ruptured and that there is a hypodense container here that doesn't have the same density of drugs centrally within it. That is hard to have much empathy with this patient's potential fate. And there again are the lung bases. Apparently these folks use the uh, handle of a wooden spoon to force these capsules past their gullet and that can result in aspiration. It's obviously not a comfortable procedure. Uh, this was an unusual enough case that I made a 3D of it. You can see those drug capsules all sparkling away there in the colonic lumen. So that is a heroin mule with aspiration. Emergency radiology, we get to see it all. And that concludes this session on colonic emergencies.